Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Jose Garcia and in this video I'm going to show you guys how you can use the Structure Designer in NX. The Structure Designer is a new addition after I think about 1953 they added this uh, and they've been refining it so I want to show you guys some examples here that might make it easy. From my understanding based on my experience training it seems like SolidWorks has had this for quite a while uh, and when I talk to people, they say the SolidWorks one is pretty darn good. Uh, so I'll leave it to you to decide if you think it's as good as that, if you're coming from SolidWorks or any other software. Okay. So the first thing you have to do is come over here into this little new button right there. Uh, and once it loads, you're going to go ahead and create an assembly. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with millimeters here uh, just to show you something that I struggled with. Uh, and of course, we can go ahead and give this a name, you know, call this video example. Okay. And then we can go ahead and hit OK. Uh, now, because I created an assembly, it does want to throw me into the assemble window here, which I'm not really going to take part in. I'm just going to go ahead and close that out for now, uh, just like that. Now, it's very important that once you're in this little assembly module, you go to the assembly navigator. Now, the reason for that is because this thing is going to get populated pretty heavily in a second once we start adding all of our members. Now, to activate the structure designer, all you're going to do is come over here into the application tab located right there. And then in the design more, there is a little button here called the structure designer. Okay. Now go ahead and click that and give it a couple of seconds. And as you can see, it throws you into this little uh, environment. Now you do need the license for this. I'm not sure if it comes included with NX by default. Okay. Uh, so if we take a look at our assembly navigator again, you can see that it's still pretty bare. The video example assembly is still the only part here. Uh, but we did get a couple of new ones here, right? Uh, the one that I want to show you is this one, the Structure Designer Navigator. Uh, you can have as many structures as you want in here, but we're just going to create one for now. So the first thing you need to do is hit this little button that says New Structure. Okay, It needs a structure in order to be able to do this. All right. Now, here's where things get a little weird. Uh, by default, it wants to throw you into this ISC library. Okay, now the ISC library, or did I say that right? ISC, yeah. Uh, it only has inch parts, so you will not be able to use metric uh, for this particular library. I said, well, if that's the case, then why the hell is it just showing me this library? Well, that's because you need to change it, right? So if I, if you're working in inches, then this is totally acceptable. You can use ISC, and it'll work just fine. But I want to use metrics since, after all, my part file is a metric. So what you need to do is come over here into the menu uh, and then go over into the preferences and then you have to hit the structure designer uh, button there. Okay. And then from here, we can go over to libraries uh, and ENDIN seems to be the one that has the metric option. Now, of course, there are some other ones in there that you know you can look at. I believe some of these are some of the Chinese standards, and of course, there's some other ones in there. Uh, of course, you can add your own if you want. So that's located in a directory somewhere on your C drive. And if you're in Team Center, then that's a whole different ballgame. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to help you there. But you can go ahead and hit this first one here, the EN DIN one. Go ahead and hit OK. And now your library is set. So now, when you hit the little new structure button, you can see that the library has changed over to that environment. Uh, so you're going to go ahead and give this a name, right? So I'll call this video structure here. Now what this is going to do is pretty weird. It's actually going to create a child to your main assembly. Now if you remember, our video example is the main parent right now, right? I should, probably should have named it something else, but you'll see what I mean. Just go ahead and hit OK. Give it a couple of seconds. As you can see, the structure designer navigator has now populated with a new folder here, okay? And if you look over in your assembly navigator, you can see that it created a child to the main parent, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind. 
Now from here, we can go ahead and build a frame. Okay, so you can either build it through sketches if you want, to 3D lines, the choice is entirely yours. But I'll go ahead and use the frame module there. And I can come down here over to the corner, for example, let's say I want to start here. Uh, and, you know, let's say that for the length, I want to do 1000. For the width, I want to do 500. And for the height, I'll do 250. Okay, something like that. Uh, and as you can see, there's my little frame there. So I can go ahead and hit OK. And as you can see, the frame shows up as a 3D line. All right. Now, you do have other things to do here if you want. You can split some curves and do some other weird things. But we're keeping this simple. We're just going to go ahead and hit Finish once we have our frame. Now that our frame is constructed, we can go ahead now and start to adding some members. Now the members button is found right here. Okay. Now if you use the AISC library at this point, it would actually return an error and say, hey, you can't use inch members on metric parts. So that's what we had to go through that whole initial process. But now if you click it, it's going to take a while to load that library, but it will show you all of the selection options that you have in that Ian Din library. So as you can see, here we go. Uh, pretty popular one seems to be T slots, but of course you have other types of uh, extrusions or members. Okay, I'm gonna go with T slots here. Uh, and of course, uh, T20 seems to be pretty acceptable for me. So I'll go ahead and stick with that. Uh, and you can just go ahead and start selecting what you want to populate with the member. So for example, I want all of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and start clicking. So there's one, two, three, right? So let's just keep going here little by little. And once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and hit OK. All right. So what it's doing now is it's creating separate part numbers or separate parts for each of these members. Okay, so it does have to go through a process here. Just give it a couple of seconds. It's also trimming your corners depending on your corner definition. Okay, I kind of skipped that on purpose just to show you where that button is if you want to do it externally. All right. Now, as you can see, if you expand the video structure 00, which is our uh, structure, right, you can see that it populated it with children. And of course, the children are all of these individual members. Okay. Now, it also did something pretty funny. It did miter these corners, which I guess if that's what you're after, then fantastic. But maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want them to butt with each other, right? I don't want them to do anything weird like that. No fancy cuts. So I can come over here to edit corner, just like that. It's this little guy right there. Kind of highlight it for you. We'll edit corner. All right, and of course I can go in here and select the corner I'm interested in. As you can see, there it is right there. And it says that, you know, two of these are gonna miter and the third one is gonna butt. Well, if I move this one to the top, just like that, uh, that becomes the miter joint, but I can set this to none, just like that. And you can see that now both of them are forced to butt with that single member, okay? So I can hit apply. And I could do that for all these other ones, right? So I'll go over here and do the same thing, right? So I'm forcing this one to extend all the way through by moving it to the top, okay? And then now this one here, I'm going to set it to none. And as you can see, it forces the other two to butt. So it's a little bit of a process. You could have done that when you're making these members. But uh, if you ever run into that situation, then this would be where you would change it. Now, unfortunately for me, I totally forgot to add a member right here. So as you can see, the corner really wasn't cooperating. But that's not a big deal. You can come back to member and add it manually. So I'm going to let it uh, load really quickly. And I'll go ahead and select that. And the cool thing about this package is it is pretty adaptive. As you can see, it knows that it needs to abut those bottom and top surfaces of those two mitered corners. Uh, but I'll just do a couple more here, right? I'll actually, I'll fly through this very quickly, right? And the reason why I'm doing this is because when I consolidate these, 
I want the same part number to be used for the same cut lengths, right? I don't want them to be, you know, completely separate part numbers for everything. That would be a little silly. Uh, so that's why I'm trimming all of these as I see fit, okay? Uh, so I'm almost done here. I just need one more or two more, actually. Let's change that to none. Hit apply. And finally, one more over here, right, like that. This one's going to be a little bit hard to pick. It looks like it's being kind of a pain in the butt there. Let's see if it'll let us pick it. Come on. Uh, okay, that one's being a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, let's see if we hide these datums, right? In NX, there's always a solution. So let's hide those datums there. Uh, and let's hit edit corner. And sure enough, we can click it now, right? Again, solutions to everything except death. Right. So there we go. We have our members here just like that. All right. Now, let's say you're building this thing and, you know, somehow in the middle of this entire thing, you find out, oh, crap, I need another one right down the middle, perfectly right down the middle. Right. Hey, that's not a problem. All you have to do is use a 3D line tool to create that line. Now, you totally could use a sketch. That is an acceptable form. But the 3D line tool is just much quicker. So. If I hit this line tool there, I can move my mouse over to the center of this line and click and go down and click and hit OK, right? So it snaps to the center of that line because of the snapping options. And I can just add one more member there. OK, so for example, uh, once the member option opens, I can insert a member and it will adapt it accordingly. So there's my member. I can go ahead and hit OK. All right. And of course, if I wanted this to extend further out, that's totally acceptable to, you know, you would do that using the edit corner. But let's say that this is perfectly acceptable to you, right? You do need to add the little brackets in here, uh, but that's a whole different video. You need to add them as a library and, you know, we're not going to get into that right now. But let's say that this is good enough for you and you're ready to consolidate this so you know how many of each you need to cut right so in order to do that you're going to use this guy right here called the consolidate structure okay and if you hit that consolidate structure all right it's going to ask you to select the structure you want to consolidate which of course is this right here okay and of course you can give it a different name right a suffix or doesn't really matter but i'll go ahead and hit okay for now and give it a couple seconds. It's going to now link the bodies into their own part numbers. Uh, and as you can see now, we have the structure here consolidated. So if I hide all of these guys, right, let's hide all of these guys here. Uh, I can show all of these. And you can see that if I unhide this one that says times three, well, that's these members right here, right? So that's pretty interesting. And of course, there are some other ones in here that I'm obviously not forgetting. There we go, just like that. Okay. Now, as you can see, I kind of made a little bit of a done goof here. If I turn that off, yep, you can see that this guy is a little different from the rest of these. Uh, I didn't change that corner over there. So obviously, things got a little weird and it separated that into its own part number. But you can clearly see that the consolidate works flawlessly, all right? So it's a very basic introduction to the structure designer. Hopefully you find it useful. I sure do. I use it very often when I'm building enclosures uh, for certain customers. Uh, if you found this video helpful, feel free to let us know. Thanks for watching.